Good morning, musicians, and welcome to a rather, um, what's it, kind of a overcast day here in, in the UK. I'm just looking through the boudoir window there. Um, I am having a bit of a scales obsession, and I've been researching. I mean, I never realised, I don't think, how important scales were, and what a shortcut they are to being able to improvise and perform really skillfully. It's a waste of time me learning whole pieces because I'm never going to perform, you know, as a classical musician in public or, um, you know, rec record. No, I don't know. If I was really good, I probably would do a performance, wouldn't I? I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? If you, you kind of say, oh, no, I'm not going to perform because I'm not good enough. But what if you were really, really good? Um, so anyway, I was looking up viola scales because I don't, I notice in the Suzuki method, there are no, there are very few scales. They don't, they, they sort of work on these pieces um, with Suzuki. And every now and then, you know, maybe one, one in a book, you'll get a scale. And I just thought that's a bit weird because when you do ABRSM, you, you know, you have to go through about, I don't know, about six, six scales, even in the early grades, you know. So I thought, well, I wonder what, what's going on there. So I did some research. Um, anyway, there's a viola master who, I'm not, I don't know anything about him. And his name was Flesh, which makes me giggle. F-L-E-S-C-H. And he comprised a book many moons ago. And it has all these scales and arpeggios in and these exercises. I mean, it's a fat old book. It really is. So I've downloaded it. I downloaded a PDF. So I will share that PDF with you guys on the Suzuki School website. It's available everywhere. I mean, you, you can get it on the Internet Archive. You can download it. Um, so th I was looking through this and I thought last night I, I was feeling quite, hello, Romeo. I was feeling quite smug, actually, because I, I can sight read. I mean, look, I can't sight read well. Although there was one that I was sight reading quite well from book three, Suzuki. But it's the same music that I do in my, on my cello so I know the tune so it's a sort of a bit of a cheat even though it's hard for me to follow the music I mean if I just read the cello music I'd be fine I could play it straight off so you know I was thinking about this and I was thinking why am I you know spending hours and hours I, mean, I spent about six hours one day last week on one piece of music and I thought is that the best way to manage my time especially seeing as I've got a school to run and I want to film today we're going to be filming I'm going to film today three music lessons piano viola and cello so and they're all going to be on the Suzuki site so my new um, lounges site and suzuki.school so I'm quite excited they're only going to be little lessons we're going to cover Suzuki book one we're going to be looking at you know the, the basics, what the string note names are, and um, you know, I'll do some backing tracks so you can you can play along with some backing tracks. Really important. Um, so loads of really good stuff over at the Suzuki School today. If you're interested in music, I hope you are interested in music. If you're on this podcast, I know I've just changed it all, so I have to sort of find my audience again. Um, just you know, if you're not interested, I've got. I've got a few other podcasts you may be interested in. <laughs> so, but then, you know, we have, we're human beings. We have lots of interests. Um, but yeah, I've, it was funny yesterday. I was very rarely get a phone call. And I was very suspicious when I get phone calls on my mobile. It's a new number. And this man phoned me and I said, well, why are you ringing? He said he was from Lounges TV. And I, th I said, why are you ringing me? And he said, well, we, we've just been looking at your, um, platform or whatever it's profile and we think you, you'd be interesting to work with sort of thing and I thought oh he's going to sell me something anyway by the end of the phone call he said oh well you seem to know what you're doing of course I do but um it's not it's not total rocket science working with loungers if you've if you've worked with YouTube before you'll be able to work with loungers um and the beauty of it is you can charge per video so it's it's the a different way of doing things other than a subscription and I've looked around and all subscription channels you have to pay for and it's just not worth it getting people to part with hard-earned money if you're keeping your clothes on 
is nigh on impossible in this day and age. Um, you have to be a very big brand. But I think even, you know, bigger brands are struggling with that. I mean, Netflix, I read that Netflix are get, introducing a lower price tier and advertising. Now, I, I don't have Netflix. I watch Prime because my mum has a Prime subscription. I am losing my voice, guys. I've been doing an awful lot of talking. Yeah, I think it's going. Gosh, that doesn't bode well, does it? Too many children's stories. Um, so, yeah, anyway, back, back to this guy ringing. But because he ran, I thought, I need I need to start going live. It's It's all very well sitting on these ideas, you know, but if you're not actually doing them, getting them out there, you're not progressing, really. Um, so, Rife Vibes, on Saturday morning, I'm doing an art workshop with painting, which I'm quite excited about. So today I'm going to set up some lighting and check that it's all OK where I want the art table to be, because that's that's quite tricky. And, you know, mentioning that it's overcast today, you, you have terrible lighting and bad lighting will put somebody off, especially an art broadcast. I mean, what's the point if you can't see the, the art properly? Do you see what I mean? The other thing I need to do is get some really large paper. And I thought, oh, well, I, where am I going to get that? I mean, I live in a sort of backwater where there are no shops. And I just suddenly thought there I've got four rolls of wallpaper driving me insane. And I keep threatening to give it to my daughter and forgetting. Um, and I'm going to use the wallpaper on a roll so I can just, you know, free myself with this um, freeing motions, this therapy with the music, um, using colour and charcoal, pastels, things that are easy to apply. Because you, you, I don't think you'd be interested, the viewer would be interested in me meticulously working on very small pieces of work. Having said that, I could do work a bit of time with my iPad. I mean, that would be quite cool, wouldn't it? What I'll do is I'll see if I can link up the live broadcast with my screen record on my iPad, because that would be quite interesting, wouldn't it? We'll just start with a picture, trace it, colour it, just any old thing but what's important is the music that would really work wouldn't it that would be quite good I wonder if it can do that I'm going to go and message that bloke who phoned me yesterday um right so yes today big day ahead scales I'm not going to do the songs in the Suzuki books um personally for me on the viola um I will go back to Suzuki one and we'll work very very slowly through Suzuki book um, I don't think it needs to be quick. There's no, there's no need for, with a child. I need to be quick because I'm an adult and I'm running out of time. <laughs> I'm running out of time to be excellent. And that concerns me. I, you know, I mean, I don't totally believe that because I, I do believe I'm very much believe I'm going to live for a very long time. Um, and I think I've got at least 40 years in me. And that's a lifetime, really. Um and obviously I've got a big head start with the, with the music. You know, there are a lot of things I already know. Something I did find out the other day was that the um, the app for tuning is not um, good enough. You have to rely on your ear because the, the apps use piano tuning. So they use, um, you know, it, it's the, the distances, the resonances aren't quite right. When you're a string player, a B flat is slightly different to a C sharp, uh, to an A sharp. There's a slight difference, and you, that you can't get that on a piano. So the piano has been restricted, if you like. That's why. That's why to me it sounds out of tune. Um, and I've been using religiously using this app, which I shouldn't use. Um, there's another Tom Play have a tuner. And I'm going to try that today just to see if that's more. all this time I've thought, why does why does my D always sound so out of tune? And it's because I've been using the app. So, yeah, I, I'm a bit thrown by this because I haven't trusted my ears for six years or something. And then I read this article 
about in intonation and, and how different ears hear different things and the difference in a string and the piano which I, as a pianist because I trained as a pianist first off I didn't realize isn't that amazing you learn something every day and I think picking up a new instrument is you you have such a big learning curve to start with so it's not just about playing that instrument it's about the th- you know music theory and things so yeah we will we will do scales practice but what I'm going to do is try and make scales fun I know it's really hard because I mean I love practicing scales I just go in a zone when I'm practicing them but it, I don't think it's good to watch I think you need to be doing it um but I do perfectly understand why it's difficult for some people to to just focus for you know an hour I mean I'm going to be doing an hour on each instrument today um, I think, you know, if you're a bit OCD, it, it's quite all right to do that. You know, you sort of obsessive behavior, but if you're just a run, run of the mill, ordinary person who likes, especially in this day and age where we we're so used to, um, you know, overstimulus, overstimulation, lots of visual, um, changes in front of us and, you know, when you get used to that, it's difficult, I think, to focus on, for example, two notes. If you're trying to get from D to E or, or D to e, D sharp, you're trying to make that. Because w- when you play the scale, what you mustn't do is just play it badly and then play it badly again. You need to, if you notice by the time you get to sort of your fourth finger, you're on the wrong, you're going off key or, or when you return to a, an open note you're out of tune you need to go back and find out what you did wrong and do it again otherwise you just teach your brain to be bad Um, and the other thing is to always work with a drone or what I'm going to do is we're going to work with pieces of music so I can do this on lounges it's really good I can have a pop song or a um, you know the eagles or you know Alleluia or Leonard Cohen for example and we can practice our scale over the top and then the artist or whoever owns the artist um, royalty catalogue gets 15, I think it's 15% of, of the fee. So that's a really good way then of incorporating um, a, a, some, a really good way of practising, you know. I mean, it's very exciting, guys. Very, very exciting. So that's what I'm doing today. So hopefully everyone will, uh, should understand quite soon that I serve land is the podcast for the Suzuki School now um, and, you know, other music as well, all the other music that I do and I serve a So the I serve show is just for music um, and uh, it's time for me to get down now, to get down with the music project and sort it out. 